not today, maybe not tomorrow huh? Maybe at the club, maybe at the bar huh? I wanna show you off like a trophy car Cause anything is better than nothing at all Hey, what's up world? It's your girl Brittany And today I have somebody very special Oh, the really? Eggplant Friday King, <laughs> The curator Bobby Ray. himself How are you? <laughs> How are you doing? You good? I'm very good I had to slide that in there because That's what she said no. Bow. Oh, you know yep. what? Two is God, too I'm easy. terrible at this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you started it. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I came to plane. You know, coming coming fresh off of the plane. Well, no, no, not fresh off the plane. I just I'm just leaving the hotel. I got in last night. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you're getting back on the plane. I'm getting back on it. You know, I get thrown off. Man, I forget what day of the week it is. I know. God, it must be stressful. It's fun. You like, like you it's, like it look, on the plane? I've never been at this level of busy before in my career. This is, this is the busiest I've been. So it's good. It's like the level where you don't have time to really think about stump something. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of good because every moment is like a gut, gut decision. Right. And it's instinctual, so it's like, it works works well. Yeah, it works out. Um, I just feel like I've gotten <clears throat> the chance to see the maturation of B.O.B., Bobby Ray, but it's just been so great to see you through the years and like your evolution. Does it feel like nine, ten years ago when it all kind of blew up or? It still feels like, you know, you know how like there's BC and AD. It's like there's my <laughs> <laughs> there's my career before my first album and okay. then my career after my first album. It's like, you know okay. what I mean? It's like the underground B.O.B. who put out. Cloud Nine, Haters Everywhere We Go, I'll Be In The Sky, mm -hmm. B.O.B. vs. Bobby Ray mixtape, um, the No Genre mixtape. Well, that actually came after the first album, but so. But then the album came out, yeah. and then you got that part of it when, you know, I'm starting flying to, you know, Malaysia, flying to Hong Kong, you know, Africa, Australia, you know, just like, boom, straight off the release, you know, like, right. like you can't, you can't predict or, you know, expect or you know what I mean that much success immediately releasing the project man that was just an amazing amazing journey for me. I got a chance to hear a little bit of your new project. Oh. Psychedelic thoughts. Yeah. Um tell me about it. Let me ask you, have you ever done shrooms? Um yes. How was your experience? Was it like awakening? It was it was okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it like this. Um you know, different people reach different levels of awareness in their life. Mm -hmm. You know how like, there's always that one friend who cracks off jokes and they're not funny and everybody's like, okay, nigga, it's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> and he just don't, he's not aware. He's not aware. Shrooms is like, what would make that nigga aware without <laughs> somebody having to tell him. Okay. It like, it accelerates your consciousness beyond your normal awareness. And you're like, wow, man, I, I, I realized so much. You know what I mean? About yourself. Yeah, about yourself. And so when you then trip, you realize that, oh, you're always tripping. It's, you're always there. It's not like you need shrooms to get there. Right. It's just kind of like a reality check, I guess. Um, for people who want to experience a psychedelic experience and you don't want to take any uh, substance or anything at all, um, try a self-deprivation tank where you suspend yourself in water it is, it's water that has so much salt, salt in it that the buoyancy, like you match it, so you float. Mm -hmm. And it's also room, uh, body temp, skin temperature. Okay. So you can't tell, you know, where your skin ends and in where the water. water begins. So you get this, this self, you know, it's you like. You tried that? Um, no, but, but that, that's what everybody says. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so everybody's been begging you to. Bobby Ray, we need Bobby Ray. We need, where is he? Where's Bobby Ray? The fuck is he? Bobby Ray is here. Bobby Ray is here. Bobby He's Ray never left. Here. Bobby Ray never left. Bobby Ray just went to the club. He just went to Magic City for a moment. He's back with his guitar intact. Is it very interesting that people sometimes don't understand like how people aren't one dimensional? Like we're multifaceted human beings. And so they get stuck on one idea of you. And it's like, I'm multiple people. You know what it is? It's kind of like this. Um, there are restaurants that keep the same menu, and there are restaurants <laughs> that, that change their menu weekly. Okay. I'm, the, I'm the guy who changes his menu out. You and, know what I mean? and we like that. <laughs> but sometimes when you get some, some really fucking good shit, you want to you you keep, come you don't back want, yes. Like, yo, what happened to that? Yes, you're right. 
chicken you're right. risotto balls. Exactly. And it's like, hey, it's coming back. I'm, you know, sorry, the chef's feeling real creative at the moment. But we finna bring the dishes you love right back to you ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> so what's like the most track, what's the track that you're most proud of? Um, most proud of? Of uh, uh, um, the new project. Man, I'm, I mean, first I'm, I'm pretty proud of a lot of them because I, I produced them myself, a lot of them. But I'll probably say Joe Bird I'm proud of the most because I literally did it because I did it in Johannesburg. It's called Joe Bird, you know, Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And the song just came to me. It was like the last day I went to Johannesburg to perform at the festival. And the next day we was gonna leave, you know, we was packing up. And I just heard this melody. And it's like, the song just, I, I was given the song. I mean, that song, like, it just came to me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it doesn't always happen like that. You know, you're in the studio, you come up with a, a drum loop or, you know, a, a riff and you live with it, you know, add something to it, you know, make a beat, yeah. spend 30 minutes making a beat or whatever. But like the whole song came to me. And so I feel like it was it was meant to be. So I just, I kept it Joe Berg. I named it Joe Berg. Mm -hmm. And um, I produced all of it completely, totality, 100%, played all the instruments. I played the piano at the end. And it was just fun being able to like build something like that and for people to hear it. It's just, I don't know, man, it's just like, you don't, you know, I kind of strive to put that, to bring that to hip hop as well. But not just like, oh, it's hip hop because it's a rap verse on it, but like yeah. really, you know what I mean? Like trying to bridge the gap. And so this is like me bridging that gap between, you know, Bobby Ray bands and Bobby Ray and B.O.B., whatever the fuck. <laughs> What's next for you? Like, where do you want to elevate yourself? Like, outside of the music? I know everybody has dreams. Oh, Hollywood. That's what you're the move, the move, yes. Act, that's what I mean when I say Hollywood. I don't think I would, I don't think I would move to Hollywood. I would just temporarily relocate. Yeah. To do my do business there. Yeah. Or just get a house out there and just hang out. I mean, yeah, I would get one, and that's where I would stay while I was out there. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'll make it my like headquarters. Yeah. But acting is like. Yeah. On your list. Acting, um, directing. Now, you gotta understand, a lot of people don't understand directing mm -hmm. and the difference between being a DP and AD and, you know, it's different. You know, it's different like- Different levels. Yeah, it's different tasks. Some people just say director. It's like, you know, there's a camera person operating the camera. He's not yeah. necessarily the director. But, you know, I just, I'm really hands-on with, with film at the moment. You know, just like, you know, learning different techniques and, and tricks and different things like that, you know, really, just, just trying to be creative, man. Trying to push the envelope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my shit to be like, you know how they talk about the Renaissance era and how they talk about Beethoven and how they talk about, you know, past great artists from the past. Like, I want my my shit to, to stay around, and it's only gonna happen if you put a lot into it. Right. It's the reason why nobody's was better than Bruce Lee. It's like no one put more into it than he did. No one was gonna sacrifice that much. Yeah. Like that was his life. You know what I mean? Not that. You know, in today's world, you know, it's just, quite frankly, it's too much going on to, you know, completely <laughs> dedicate your entire life yeah. to a single craft. And not that it's even necessary, but, you know, it's always going to be examples out there for to keep you inspired and to push you in the right direction. Have you been on any auditions? Yes. I auditioned for Straight Outta Compton, actually. Did you really? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So who who are you auditioning for? They wanted to see me audition for uh, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. For real? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see both. I want to see both. Wow. <laughs> so I also had a Jerry curl. How did it go? Um, man, I did. I did great yeah. considering. You know what I mean? Let me. Okay. Consi <laughs> no. Considering. Considering. Look, I'm not gonna lie. Like the skill of acting is not, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, you know, being a character, because you ultimately just being yourself. Yeah. But when you have to take on a different energy and a different personality and like mannerisms. mannerisms yeah, and then yourself. make that yourself and make it natural. That's that's the art of acting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and like, I got a huge respect for actors, you know? And, and so, but considering me not having any acting experience, yeah. how well I you did. You fucking killed it. I fucking killed that audition, okay. shit. <laughs> 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 Wait, so to okay, give me like, let's transform you into Dr. <laughs> I'm gonna need my hat back. 
I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you what scenes. I'm gonna tell you what scenes okay. I, I acted. I, um, the scene. Okay, wait. Who's seen the movie? I haven't seen it yet. He's seen nobody it. seen it. Well, it's not a spoiler, but like it's the scene where he's in the kitchen arguing with his mom. Mm -hmm. That was the, the scene that I auditioned. So I had to like <laughs> audition that when he's at the refrigerator and all of that. Yeah. And then I auditioned the scene when Dr. Dre's talking to uh, to uh, oh, what's the guy's name? The 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 guy over the white guy. Oh, um, over Ruthless Records. Yeah. Name? What's Jim, it's not, it wasn't, it was No, it's not Joe. It's the original Dundada of this whole <laughs> That guy. Yeah, yeah that guy. Yeah, when he's, he's talking, talking to him in the hotel room and he was trying to get him to sign, I did that scene and then I did the scene where he's interviewing, where uh, Ice Cube's doing the interview. Yo, what up, y'all? This is B.O.B., Bobby Ray-Bans. And right now you're watching Global Grind TV. Keep it locked. Bobby!